In this last segment of the percolation video series, we're going to discuss a trick you can use to make your code faster, to avoid linear time, uh, linear number of calls to your other data types. Ugh. Is that Nicolas Cage? I think it is. Anyway, all right. So <laughs> uh, what we're going to do uh, is we are going to uh, do a trick that's reminiscent of other things you might find yourself doing moving forwards when you design algorithms and data structures, uh, which is to kind of fudge the definitions of your data structure just a little in ways that are convenient to speed things up. So in particular, in this case, my, my one weird trick I'm going to recommend uh, is to create a virtual top and virtual bottom site. Now, what does that mean? Well, rather than having an n by n grid where we have 25 items uh, in our, our union find data type, I'll actually have two additional items. So this might be uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. Uh, and this might be like 999, and this might be 1000. Uh, and this, um, and then what you'll do is anytime you open a top site, you'll say, okay, I want to union that top site with the virtual top site with 999. And if I open a bottom site, same deal. Why is this useful? Well, we can make the observation that if the virtual top site is connected to all of these, well, then if I ever want to know if something's full, I just say, is there a connection from here up to that virtual top site? Likewise, if I want to check, does the system percolate? Well, rather than checking each of these pairs and saying, well, is, the, is this connected to this? Is this connected to this? Is this connected to this? And so forth. We could just say, is the virtual bottom site connected to the virtual top site? Okay. Uh, and so this idea will make things much faster because we only have to do one connected operation or is connected operation, depending on uh, the terminology you prefer, in order to determine is full or percolates. There's one danger of this approach of creating a virtual top and bottom site, and that's the threat of backwash. So what is backwash? Well, it should not be the case that if you dig a tunnel straight from the bottom to the, from the top to the bottom, and then create another little tunnel down here, water should not gush all the way from the top around the bottom back around. This is so-called backwash. This should not be full, okay? So if it so happens that in your implementation you find that you're getting backwash, that will be the final challenge of the assignment. And unlike the other challenges, I'm not going to spoil it because I think it's very cool. Uh, and uh, so this is a very tricky problem. You guys should feel free to talk to each other. Uh, and I will say that it's not going to be like one of those things that you might have had on other projects where, uh oh, I did everything wrong. I have to redo everything. This is actually going to be a much smaller tweak. Um, and uh, yeah, it's not, it's not a major reworking. Uh, there's actually a lot of different approaches to solving this, and I think all of them are interesting. Uh, in fact, I'll say that when I first uh, when we first deployed this assignment to Coursera, the MOOC that I uh, helped build when I was at Princeton, this single topic generated more traffic than any other topic in the course. So uh, I hope you find it interesting, uh, and that's it as far as homework two goes, so have fun.